Hello, I'm Robert Kiyosaki, and thank you for listening. I'm here today to tell you that even though we are in tough times, you can still be a success. In fact, it's during tough times that many people get ahead financially. In fact, I'm looking forward to these tough times. There are many reasons for this economic crisis we are in today, and it is the biggest financial crisis in the history of the world. In my opinion, it is greater than the Great Depression, which began in 1929. One of the many reasons for the crisis is for the first time, you're now competing for a job with somebody who works in China, India, or the Philippines, or Eastern Europe. And for Americans, this means that you can no longer make $80 an hour because there's people in countries all over the world who are willing to work for a dollar an hour. How do you compete with that? Today with the information age, I can now hire accountants and attorneys in India who's, who speak great English and who understand our laws extremely well. Why would I pay somebody $500 an hour, an accountant or an attorney, when I can hire somebody in India for $25 an hour? So this is one of the big reasons the idea of a safe, secure job for life is really an obsolete idea. You couple that with technology, and today I can replace people with technology. Why would I pay somebody more money when I can replace them with a computer? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Today, companies are not just downsizing, they're just letting thousands of people go. Unemployment is rampant. The tragedy is we have many bright students leaving school, let's say age 24 to 35, just loaded down with debt from college loans, and they can't even find a job. So the big problem today is in a global society and industrial age world, the idea of a safe, secure, high paying job for life is an obsolete idea. So for those of you who may not be familiar with Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a book that has now sold over 25 million copies worldwide, it is the number one personal finance book in all history and has been on the New York Times bestseller list for over eight years. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a true story of my two dads. As I said, my real dad was the head of education for the state of Hawaii, a PhD. Great father, great dad. But he was the one who always said to me, go to school and get a job, work hard, save money, and get out of debt. And my rich dad said to me, who was my best friend's father, who started teaching me at the starting at the age of nine, he says, if you're gonna be rich, don't get a job, don't save money, and don't get out of debt. You have to learn to use money and be an entrepreneur. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a very simple story about two fathers tell their sons, one rich, one poor, about how to manage their lives and take control of their future. And thank God in 1974, I listened to my Rich Dad. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was book one in the Rich Dad series of books, and there's a number of books today. But book number two is the most important book for people looking to make changes in your life. So if you're looking to make changes, a change of mindset, a change of how you look at the world, it is book number two, and book number two is entitled The Cash Flow Quadrant. And the cash flow quadrant is very simple. Think of making a cross in the middle of a piece of paper. On the left-hand upper corner, put an E. The lower left corner, put an S upper right put a B, and the lower right put an I. E stands for employee. So that's why my poor dad always said, go to school so you can get a job, because my poor dad wanted me to become an employee. S stands for small business, specialist, or solo. So a lot of times, many small business people are S, and or they're specialists like a doctor or a lawyer. My mom wanted me to become a doctor. And she says, you know, son, why don't you become a doctor? In other words, become an S. And I said, there's only one problem, mom. She says, what's that? S's are smart people. Now, for some of you know, I didn't do that well in school, even though my dad was a head of education. So my mom says, you're right, you shouldn't be a doctor because you'll never do well in school. So I didn't become an S. See, S's believe they have to do everything on their own. When you listen to a S, they'll always say the same words. If you want it done right, do it by yourself. So a lot of times they're just loners. And you look at different sports, like golf is a pretty lonely sport. You play it by yourself. On the B and the I side, B stands for big business, 500 employees or more, or 10 million or more in income, gross income. So very few people make the B quadrant. By starting your own business in the network marketing industry, you have a chance to move from the E and the S, from employee to self-employed or small business or specialist, to the big business side, which is to be a business owner and where you have a lot of people working with you and for you. Your job is to spread the wealth to as many people as possible. Now, this is where the I fits in. I invest a lot in real estate. I have a lot, I have gold and silver companies. I have oil 
and I have my book businesses. I have lots of businesses, but I invest my money in the I quadrant. And the problem with most people is they don't have enough money to invest. That's the problem. They say, well, how can I invest? I don't have any money. Well, the reason you don't have any money on the E and the S side, the taxes are so high, you can't get ahead. You know, I pay less taxes than most of my employees, percentage-wise. I make millions of dollars, but I'll pay down to around 15% tax. Most employees, they're lucky. The more money they make, the higher they pay in taxes. So those are the big differences between the B, E, S, B, and the I. Many E's and S's cannot invest simply because they're out of money. The government sucks their money out through taxes, through debt. You know, buy a house, it's your biggest investment, which is not. And number two is they put your money into, you know, a pension plan, you know, and all this stuff. So your money is going to the mutual fund companies. And then inflation kills you. You look at oil and gas and all that. They just keep going up. So a guy like me is making fortunes because I invest directly in oil wells and gold companies and silver and stuff like this. So as inflation hits, I make more money. So the B and the I side, the tax laws are different. I can make a lot more money on the B and I side than the E's and S's can make. So that's the power of the cash flow quadrant. By reading that book, you'll, you'll see that the E's, S, B's, and I's all have different mindsets. The tax laws are different and your friends are different. So that's why the Cash Flow Quadrant is an essential book for anybody looking to make changes in their lives. You know, they estimate that 80% of the people are on the E and the S side. I actually think it's higher, like 95%, but for safety factor, let's call it 80%. The first thing you have to shift is your mindset. And then you know, a lot of people say to me, well, it's tough being an entrepreneur, or entrepreneurs are born, not made. That's not true. The trick is how do you change your mindset and how do you get the set of skills that allow you to transition from employee or small business self-employed to big business and investor? Out of all the business models I've discovered, one stood out from the rest. It requires little upfront money, very low overhead, and can be worked part-time and can generate you the income part-time so that you can transition out of your full-time job. And this great business opportunity is a thing called network marketing. The thing about entrepreneurs is they make things happen. They take control of their lives. They don't let other people's small minds stop them. And the beauty of a network marketing business, the reason I recommend it is for you to be supported by an organization, to go through your fears, to change your friends, to not care what other people say or think about you. If you can do that, I mean, if you can handle what pointy-headed little intellectuals say to you about this business, then you shall grow up to become a great entrepreneur. But as long as you care so much about what other people think of you, you'll probably never be successful in life no matter what you do. Because as you know, this world is not an easy place. It's not fair. In fact, sometimes it's really, really cruel because if you're poor, they step on you. If you're not successful, they step on you. If you don't have confidence, they step on you. So it's up to you to gain that confidence, the skill set, the mindset, the guts, the determination to not care what other people say about you because 95% of them are broke anyway. So let me share with you my reasons for recommending network marketing. First of all, I've never done it. And I had a closed mind to it. You know, I thought it was terrible. I was invited to several of these events and I sat there and I said, why should I do that? Well, the reason I said, why should I do that is because I knew how to start a business on my own anyway. That's what I had a rich dad for. But it was a friend of mine in Texas who opened my mind up to network marketing. And here he was, a rich, rich, rich guy, and he was starting a network marketing business. And I said, Bill, why are you doing that? You don't need the money. He says, that's correct. But I need to give back. I need to train other people. And more importantly, I need investors from my other businesses. So he said, one of the problems he had was he talked to people about investing in this real estate company. Most people didn't have any money. So he says, well, if I can help solve their problem of not having enough income, maybe they'll invest in my real estate businesses. And so I went, oh my God, you know, it really is about people helping people. That's all he was doing. It was not about being greedy or, or trying to sell something. It was just trying to help your fellow human being. And that's when my mind started to shift. And I realized that most people will never make the transition from the E and the S side to the right side, the B and the I side. And that's all he was doing. He was helping people make the transition from employee or self-employed or small business to big business and the investor side. And with that, 
I changed my mind. And that's when I started looking into network marketing with open eyes, with refreshed point of view. I had to let go of my closed-minded ideas of what I had heard. And what I found, because I went to some of these conventions and I signed up and I went to look at things, I found out they're fabulous organizations. Now, let me warn you, there's good and bad in everything. There were good leaders and bad leaders. But what I was really impressed with in most of the companies and most of the leaders was a sincere desire to help their fellow human being grow, to become bigger than they really are, to gain the confidence, to gain the skills necessary to someday become a great entrepreneur. And that's what I saw. I saw network marketing as a great personal development type of business. And that's why I saw it, as my new book title says, The Business for the 21st Century. It is about developing people, not pushing them down. It's about building them up so they can take better control of their lives and their future without worrying about being fired all the time or will I be downsized or what if the economy change? Network marketing business, the business of the 21st century, is about turning people from employees to entrepreneurs. That's what I support. So although I've never belonged to a network marketing business, I do support. The Rich Dad Company supports individuals shifting from employee or self-employed to the big business, entrepreneur, and investor side. So that's why I support network marketing. It's a fabulous way to grow and help other people to grow and realize their full potential in life. So what is network marketing? The concept is simple. Today, companies spend millions and billions of dollars advertising. So what network marketing does, instead of spending all of that money on television, radio, print, and the web, they pass that money on to you. So network marketing is very simply, the best form of marketing is word of mouth, viral marketing, friends helping friends type of marketing. And so that's where the profits are generated from. Rather than giving it to the big ad agencies or the media companies, you pass it on to yourselves and your friends. That's the concept of network marketing. Network marketing is not so much about selling. It's about building a network of people. It's about building an asset for you and your family. So an important value of network marketing, it's real world business education. Now, I'm fortunate enough to be invited to many colleges and universities and speak to entrepreneurs. The problem with them is they're not really prepared for the real world. Most of them will still leave school and hope to find a job. The beauty of network marketing, moving from the E and the S side to the right side of the quadrant, first of all, requires a change in mindset. That mindset is exactly opposite of E's and S's. And that's the tough part. Once you see, oh my God, I don't need a steady paycheck. I don't need to work hard for myself. Then your mind starts to shift. Then it requires learning new skills. It's not necessarily easy. Some people it's easier than others, but you have to learn to have money and people work for you rather than you work for money and other people. And that's a very different mindset. It means you have to become a leader. It's also called business education. A network marketing business is a great way to get real world business education. I would listen to the person who shared this audio with you and then go with this person to a meeting. You know, you have to ask, are these people really concerned about me and my welfare? See, corporate America or most big corporations are not interested in you. They're interested in making money for their shareholders, not employees. So you have to ask yourself, are the leaders really concerned about me? And in most cases, I think you'll find the answer is yes. You see, in network marketing, your leader cannot be successful unless you're successful, which is completely opposite of corporate America. In corporate America, when I worked for Xerox, if I didn't perform, I was fired. I mean, I came close to being fired for two to three years. I was always on the bottom. And they would have fired me. But the beauty of network marketing is they want to pull you up. As long as you're willing to show up, they'll work with you. They won't fire you. They'll give you time to develop and to become the person you are. And then after you're successful, then your job is to assist other people to do the same thing. You cannot be successful unless you help other people. It's a fabulous form of business. It's the, it is a humane way of doing business. It's really about meeting people heart to heart, soul to soul, business to business. Let's help each other out. And that's one of the beauties of network marketing. It's real world, but it's people helping people become the best they are. 
When I came back from Vietnam, again, my poor dad said, go back to school. And for some reason, it didn't feel right to me. It wasn't what my gut was telling me to do. So instead, I went to do personal development type of work. And I found personal development is much more fulfilling, much more rewarding, but it means me getting out of my mind. It means me doing my best to become bigger than my situation. See, most people are crushed by the environment, especially in this crisis. They lose their job, they're out of money and all this, and the world crushes them. Personal development means you have to become bigger than your problems. If you're in debt, you have to become bigger than your debt. If you don't become bigger than your debt, you'll never solve the problem. If you're only making, let's say, 50000 a year, then you have to get bigger than $50,000 a year. And that's what personal development is. In traditional corporations, they're always saying, well, you should live below your means. You know, be happy to have a job. You know, next year we might give you a 2% pay raise, but only if you do as I tell you. That's not about personal development. That's called personal slavery. You become a slave to the corporation. If that's what you want to do, stay there. Have a good life. It's not my life. I needed to become bigger than my problems. When I started my first business back in 1978, I made a lot of money. It was a nylon and velcro surfer wallet business, and I was soon a millionaire, but I lost all my money, and I found myself nearly a million dollars in debt. And what my rich dad said to me is, congratulations, you just failed. And most successful entrepreneurs will fail three, four, five times. They'll lose that many businesses. But each time you'll get smarter. So your first job is to figure out how to pay back that million dollars, you know? So I never declared bankruptcy. I just had to get smarter and bigger than a million dollars. And that was the best training program I ever had. I had to rebuild my business and pay people back. You see, if I got a job, there's no way I could have paid back a million dollars, not making 100000 a year. There's no way taxes would have killed me. So, again, it was personal development. Now that I got bigger than a million dollars, that was great. And now it's on to hundreds of millions of dollars. So personal development is simply you getting bigger than your problems. The only problem is you get bigger problems. And so today it becomes this challenge of how big my problems are because then I can solve them. Most people give in to their problems. They get smaller than their problems. And that's when life stops for them. So one of the primary reasons I recommend network marketing because it's a personal development program. You, know, you don't join and hope to become rich next week. If you join a network marketing company, I strongly recommend you say, I'm gonna give it a five-year commitment. I'm gonna give it a full shot for at least five years. Because whether it's network marketing or baseball or football or whatever it is, quitters never win. And most people, when the going gets tough or the problems seem insurmountable, they quit. And that's why they'll never be successful in life. So network marketing is a very much a support group of people who want the best for you. But you have to give your best also. And so that's why I say consider it a five-year commitment that you'll do your best for five years. I can almost assure you that if you do and you give it your best for five years, you'll be a completely different human being at the end of the period. Number two is it's scalable. You know, I mean, if you join a network marketing company, you're not stuck to your little hometown. In most cases, you have a worldwide opportunity to spread all over the world your business. It's scalable to as big as you are. If you're small, it'll stay small. If you get big, it'll grow bigger. And number three, the most important thing as far as business skills go is you have to be a great leader. You look at the world today, we lack great leaders. You know, people just want to say what they, people want to hear. They'll tell you anything to get elected. So the great thing about network marketing is not only learn great sales skills, you learn great leadership skills. Face it, if you're not a great leader, you won't be successful at anything. So the most important thing that network marketing teaches you about leadership is to be a great leader. You better practice what you preach. You better, you know, be a role model, an example for other people to follow. If you lack courage, people won't follow you. So the great thing about network marketing is you develop your leadership skills, and entrepreneurs are great leaders. You see, there's four basic people in the world. There are people who must be right. They want to have all the right answers, and they know everything. And those people rarely change. People who must be right are some of the most pig-headed, narrow-minded righteous individuals, but you have to have them as attorneys and accountants, you know. Number two are people who must be comfortable. Their house could be burning down, but they'll sit on the sofa, you know, looking at the TV channels, watching for the next football game. 
The next three is a person who must be liked. A person who must be liked will probably never be successful in the network marketing business because if your survival is dependent upon somebody liking you, you'll probably never be anything because you want to approve and make other people happy. And the fourth person is a person who must win. And I love winning. You know, to me, that's the joy of life, setting big dreams, big goals, and going for it. Even if it may take two or three years or four years to get there, I like the idea of winning. And winners like winners. And that's why the network marketing business is so good for people who love to win. That's who it's for. You see, E's and S's, they work hard, but they don't create any assets. You know, if you're self-employed, you may have a business, but it's not really an asset. That's the problem, because if you stop working, the asset dies on you. It doesn't work anymore. So B's and I's, the difference between them is they're creating real assets. For example, my, my rich dad company is an asset. Whether I work or not, a couple of million dollars a month comes in. It's not a bad business, you know, and for the rest of my life. I love real estate because as long as my tenants are paying me rent, that money keeps coming in. And I like my oil wells very simply because every month I'm selling oil. You know, that's a real asset. So that's the mindset difference between E's and S's, B's and I's. E's and S's work for money. B's and I's build assets, and assets are real wealth. Another word on the difference between wealth and money. Wealth is not measured in money. Like, it's not how rich are you. Wealth is measured in time. For example, if I have $1,000 in savings and my expenses are $1,000 a month, then my wealth is one month. If I have 12,000 in savings and my expenses are $1,000 a month, my wealth is measured in 12 months. A mistake many people make when picking a network marketing business is they look at the product. And products are important, don't get me wrong. But you really need to look at who your leaders are. You know, how good is their training program? Do they have your best interests at heart? Will they assist you in coming out of your shell, not being afraid of rejection, not caring what other people think of you? That's the most important thing. And then go on to become a great leader and build a network. That's more important than a product or a compensation plan. And once you find that great leader and that great business, that's where you find home. Look into the company. Are they willing to train you? You know, stop looking at the product and look at the leaders. Look at the training. And that's when you'll find the right business for you. So what does it take? It doesn't take a higher education. Like my poor dad wanted me to get my master's and my PhD. And I'd be poor like him if I did that. After all, PhD stands for poor, helpless, and desperate. And that's what happens to people when they become PhDs. I have one, by the way. You don't have to be great in sales because the company will train you. It's not about selling, it's about becoming a great leader, a person that inspires other people to be great. And you don't need to quit your job, you can start part-time. It does take going beyond your comfort zone, being willing to learn, study. You've got to persevere, and most important, have a great attitude. It also takes time. It's not a get-rich-quick business, it's about building an asset. Give it at least five years. You know, it's a book called Outliers. They say it takes at least 10,000 hours to become successful in anything. Most people are quitters. That's why they're not successful. And it all comes down to action. You know, analysis paralysis. That's why so many smart people never become successful, because they sit there and they analyze something and they never take any action. Look, one of the best things I learned from Vietnam, don't think, act. So the people who win are the people who take action. And now it's time to take action. So is it time for you to make changes in your life? Is it time for you to take control of your future? Is it time to join a business of the 21st century? Remember why you want to make money and be rich. So you can live a magnificent life. It's not just about money. You want to have peace of mind and love what you do and be surrounded by people who are just like you. I like network marketing so much because it is an equal opportunity business. It's not about education. It's not about race not about age or gender. It really is like a level playing field, but it really isn't, because it's up to you. If you have more determination, more drive, more discipline, you'll win over people who don't. Network marketing is the business model of the future. It's set up to make it possible for anyone to win. It's a business for the new era, after the industrial age. It is the information age, after all. 
These businesses are going to explode in the future, especially as unemployment increases and wages come down. Most importantly, it's a path to personal success. It's about personal development. It's about becoming bigger than your problems. It's about bringing out the greatness that lies inside of you. It's about creating financial freedom through a process that helps other human beings. And that's revolutionary. So the person that handed you this audio is also a leader. They see the leader in you. They want you to become the best you can be. You see, the economy is not the issue. The issue is you and what you're gonna do after listening to this audio tape.